Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things going on in the world of Linux and open source. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Brand. We're just talking about tea. Why tea's delicious. Also, October's almost done with, and next month people want presents. It's a fun time to be yeah. around. But we're going to talk <laughs> more about the Linuxy things this week. And one thing that really caught me off guard, Jill. What then? I've been watching a new show. I've been uh -huh. watching a new show. It's called The Penguin. Okay. Oh, yeah, I've heard I've all I've watched about, yeah. five episodes of The Ping when they had brought up Linux once. I'm Aww. starting to think it's not a Linux show. I'm starting to think it's not a Linux show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Now, I say that kind of as a joke. It, surprisingly, I enjoyed what I've watched of The Ping one. I'm not going to get it too much. But, like, no yeah. joke, I watched, like, the first four episodes. This has been, like, a decade ago, kids, of Grey's Anatomy, waiting for <laughs> the aliens to show up. Because <laughs> I'm the type of person that will just start watching something based on the name of a show. And it was Grey's and you know, the Grey's, right? The, the yeah, aliens. The Grey's, and I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, this is going to be like one of those sci fi, <laughs> sci fi. No, I'm like, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're looking for something to watch, I uh, recommend the Penguin. I'm not, I've not been a fan of any of the um, Batman TV shows really outside of like the first series of uh, Penny, Pennyworth. Pennywise and Penny, well, yeah, it's Pennywise. Yeah, Pennywise. <laughs> Pennywise. Uh, that was pretty good. What's going on with you, Joe Bryan? Oh boy. So the Steam Next Fest, as a lot of people know, is actually last week. And I had downloaded a ton of demos and I still have not been able to play them <laughs> play the games. It's been one thing after another. <laughs> so because I wanted to I wanted to tell you about my great adventures uh, with playing uh, the Steam next fest demos which i love it's one of my favorite times of the year when that happens <laughs> it's good to, to see them. them yeah <laughs> now, if you're so looking for some for um steam deck <laughs> recommendations i went through and gave a couple of my picks yeah, for the latest did. ones on linux gamecast you can find that where you can yeah. find this show linuxgamecast.com just go check out the latest episode of that everything's in the show notes didn't find anything amazing i'm not going to tell you i'm not i'm not going to sell you a false bill of goods but uh and it does bring down you know we had a conversation basically revolving around the art of making game demos and how that's changed and maybe how that art has been lost go give that a listen if you get a chance yeah but something we it, touched on yeah saturday on linux gamecast is something i want to bring back up and that's the cancellation of the qualcomm snapdragon dev kit the reason i'm going to bring back this up is because i think i finally got an answer to this well, this is the Snapdragon X Elite Dev Kit. You know, the big fire-breathing, mm -hmm. super chonky SoC that we all <laughs> wanted to get our mitts on. And if you've been patiently waiting for years to ship, well, bad news. You know, this is over at uh, Jeff Gearling's blog. He's like, I got an email. They said it was canceled. We're getting a refund. And this was that X Elite with 32 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage. And it was like a 900, 700, something like that. And um, these did ship out. You know, a couple of people got their mitts on them. But yeah, they were extraordinarily late when they came out and, you know, just like a low run. Eventually, you might get one type thing. And they were so late, you could already buy the actual product that they were the development kits for off the shelf before you could buy one of these. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of one of those deals. And they had like this big push on Windows, right? You're like, yeah, these, yeah. this is all about Windows 11 on ARM. We're going to, it's for real this time, not like the previous two times. This is really going to be the, and Qualcomm's just like, well, we're done. We tried, you know, the, just that huge focus on Windows basically ignored Linux up until this. Mm -hmm. And you just finally got some Linux support up and going on these things, even though Qualcomm's like, we're going to make these open eventually. It's like, hopefully. And uh, it wasn't a great piece of hardware either because it did lack an HDMI port. You had to use a dongle to get video out of these things. Pedro pointed out on Saturday it didn't have FCC certifications. Mm -hmm. Like I just said, mm -hmm. Linux support like in its current state was kind of ish. I'm like, what's going on? Did Qualcomm just like, okay, well, that check cashed piece. We're out. You know, Qualcomm's been in a bit of a legal battle, though. And I talked about that on Saturday. And I'm like, I wonder if like that could be a problem. <laughs> I think that might be the problem. <laughs> Turns out, okay. Arm, you know, the company <laughs> that licensed this technology to Qualcomm and everyone else who makes ARM, including Raspberry Pi, they've canceled their uh, chip design license because they're in a bit of a spat. A bit mm -hmm. of a spat. A while back, 
Qualcomm bought a, another company, a smaller company that was working on like server stuff, you know, like designing their own custom arm cores. I might be getting some of this stuff wrong. I'm doing the best I can. Let me know in the comments if I jack something up horribly. Qualcomm bought that company and they're like, ours. So then Qualcomm starts developing these fire breathing chips using, you know, what they had. And that company had a separate license with ARM to develop their own custom cores. And Qualcomm's like, well, that license is now, you know, I made this, right? And they just kind of took it and like, well, we're covered by that. And ARM's like, no, 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 no. You can't be doing these custom cores. You got to renegotiate the contract. And Qualcomm's like, no, man, we're cool. So that's what they're going to court for right now. And that's mm -hmm. the license that ARM is like, you no longer have a license to develop your custom cores, but Qualcomm can still use like the prefab cores from ARM to make their other stuff. It's not like Qualcomm is not going to be able to release products. So this is going to go to trial in December. And I'm thinking this might, could be completely wrong about this, be one of the reasons, if not the reason, mm -hmm. we saw the cancel, cancel, cancelization. Why am I trying to say that? Yeah. <laughs> Cancelled uh, so support for the Snapdragon X Elite. They, they <laughs> dev noped kit. that dev kit from yeah. orbit. So that's yeah, Jill. I think that's kind of sad news, it especially is. we were about to get some uh, support or kind of got a little bit of support, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, it it turns out that the recent recent release of Linux kernel six dot one one has full support now for the Qualcomm Snapdragon X. Elite, uh, I'm sorry, the Snapdragon X Elite chipset. So <laughs> that that that's a big deal, and we've been talking about it a lot here on LWW, and it's one of the reasons that uh, Tuxedo is actually going to release a Tuxedo Linux Snapdragon X Elite laptop, and they said soon after it gets full support on uh, in the Linux kernel. So it's here now, and I think we're going to see that soon. I went to the tuxedo's uh web website and they said it, it's still up there it says coming soon maybe by christmas <laughs> and that puts uh, people yeah. like tuxedo in a really like not great spot because yeah <laughs> who knows like the ones yeah. that are on the shelf they might not be able to get parts for these things they might not be able to get yeah. the socs coming up in the future so yeah we're just gonna sit around waiting that is not our only bit of army news uh something caught me off guard i got, I got an email earlier this week and i'm like oh look yeah. what's what's going on what's going on from the <laughs> from the people over at system 76 yeah <laughs> announcing a new case with cars driving around it in a red stripe <laughs> called the thelio astra huh all right so you know what i talked about using arm for running game servers like like on a little wii pi zero well imagine how well it might run on this Astra, it's a 128 core Ampere ARM workstation with an NVIDIA RTX 6000. You can even slam up to 512 gigabytes of RAM in this critter. Now, so cool. it has premium coolant, which means it uses air and fan technology. That's kind of amazing. Strangely, it ships with Ubuntu. I'm like, oh, huh. all right. I was expecting Pop OS, but I kind of get it because they're targeting, this is like an engineering thing in like, that makes sense. Pre-orders are available, but it does kind of roll, roll down to, oh, hang on. We, we got different options. Oh, I want to, th another thing we were talking, I was talking with Arthur and I think yesterday in chat in our super secret discord about, uh, he was like, oh, I want to get a system, system 76 case. And I'm like, yeah, cool. And I was like, can you get a system? Apparently system 76 will sell you just a case. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we talked about that. You can uh, get yeah. one. Um, doesn't come. <laughs> that what accent is extra, though. So you got to keep that in mind. Uh, <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at these uh, tech specs. You get 2204 LTS. You get the Ampere Ultra NVIDIA graphics 512 up to 16 terabyte. So two M.2 PCI Gen 4, which is good to go. Two 10 gig LAN, one 1 gig LAN, and one dedicated IPMI. 850 watts so yeah this is going to use a little bit of power but i mean probably not that much but you know no kill like overkill uh love to see this mm -hmm. love to see this uh kind of surprising to see that from system 76 and we've definitely said uh it would be great if manufacturers were going to release like an arm based desktop the only thing with this and you know this is not 
bad. This is not bad. This is just reality. What I want to see, how much is this going to cost? And they're like, contact our sales team. And they're like, well, I can't afford that. Um, that's always been that code, right? Um, how much do you think they're going to cost? Jill, you got to guess. Take a, take oh, a guess. Um, starting at 2500 All right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Maybe a uh, thousand? <laughs> November 12th. If you know what, they probably get a pretty decent product on their hand if they can get out of this, like for, you know, right around two grand. Mm hmm. You know, yeah. and it's got an A4000 on it, which that's good. That's a really good that's card. And it's good. not a crazy yeah. expensive card. I've been looking at getting one of those on the used market. So, huh. Uh, mm. November 12th, Jill. What, what, what are your thoughts about this? Like, do you want an, I want an ARM desktop to play around with. I, I have like a, list of things that i could do with it (laughs) so this you know is system 76 first arm 64 powered machine and in collaboration with ampere computing to boot so awesome system 76 is calling the thelio astra quote the first official desktop for streamlined autonomous vehicle development powered by ampere processing and this ARM64 workstation is also focused on automotive safety systems, software-defined vehicle development, and for native testing and simulation on the same architecture as ARM-based automotive electronic control units. But yeah, so the Thelia Astra is, it's like Ven was saying, is scheduled for release November 12th of this year, and it comes pre-installed with either Ubuntu 2204.LTA LTS or Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. <laughs> so immediately yeah. you want to get your hands on it, try to put Arch on it. Um, maybe, yes. maybe we we'll get around, uh, <laughs> see if we can get, uh, is there an arm build of uh, Nobra? Nobera, <laughs> yes. <laughs> can we do it? I don't know. Uh, something like this, if I had a, my mitts on something like this, I, I would start slamming it full of um, everything I know, like production wise that has arm drivers, like my Black Magic capture cards and things like that. You just, Answering all those questions that nobody else Yeah, has. to see what works. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And play around with it. it out. But I'm sure uh, this will probably be sampled to YouTubers who will play a video game emulated through Fax Audit at 15 FPS. And like, yay. So good luck, everybody. Have fun with it. Keep your eye on it. And uh, Yeah, this is so cool. We'll, mm-hmm. we'll definitely be swinging back around and taking a look on the 12th and see what this comes out at price wise because this could be a very compelling option and i have nothing but support for our arm Mm -hmm. desktop future now we got a little bit of like huh going on with a core boot right yeah this is really interesting ven so the computer hardware company malaball based in las vegas nevada they make laptops installed with linux and windows and interesting news, they recently stated that they will no longer support core boot open source firmware on their laptops because of many issues they faced. Malibu said that the documentation for core boot was inadequate and thus they had to reach out to multiple core boot consultants to proceed. And then one thing led to another. They had a lot of issues with, with different core boot consultants. And Malibu actually states, in all of our correspondence with these core boot developers, we went out of our way to get along. But despite our best efforts and putting up with all their nonsense, we were ultimately thrown to the curb like trash. (laughs) What do you think, Ben? (laughs) Well, I mean, I have never heard of Malibu. And like, if they want to stop them from like buying stuff from them like cool whatever like i don't know i I just saw this i wanted to put this out there so people can go (laughs) over it and let me know what exactly is going down because like core boots one of those things i gets brought up right yeah and i'm like all right Mm -hmm. cool next (laughs) i I just keep going on like i am not (laughs) dialed into like messing with it myself but i know a lot of people in our audience are and they could probably be like here's what's really going on so I yeah. just wanted to throw that in there. So uh, oh, definitely. Well, them uh, not you know wh- wanting to deal with core boot, I understood, but you know banning a, a region and a company because of the situation. I don't know. Uh, you know what? You know, ban. It's like ban's another word for like we just don't want to deal with you. Yeah. <laughs> like go away. 
go find somebody else to deal with. And I've definitely had situations like that in my life. But yeah, if you know what's going on, or is this even like legitimate? I don't know. Like, are these complaints real? Is this something that people have been dealing with? Other companies have been dealing with? Yeah. Curious. But again, yeah. Mm-hmm. Outside of my wheelhouse. But mm-hmm. something I do know about is ploops. Yeah. So this is really exciting news. Floopy, which is the awesome makers of fine open source computer peripherals like mice, trackballs, and headphones that we have talked about many times here on LWW, has released an open source trackpad that you can 3D print yourself. So cool. All the instructions for printing, programming, and making your own Ploopy trackpad are available on their GitHub page listed in the show notes. This fully customizable Ploopy trackpad has multi-finger gesture support, precision tracking, and a low friction touch surface that is very durable. And actually, it's a really nice large size at 7 inches by 5.2 inches. So it's nice and big. And and also, like other Ploopy products, you can also pre-order a Ploopy trackpad kit that you can make yourself for $99.99 Canadian or a fully assembled Ploopy trackpad for $129.99 Canadian. This looks really cool. And it it doesn't look like it's too hard to make either. <laughs> yeah, you just peel the sticker off, put a thing on it. And yeah, like you're not going to be doing those surface mount components on this one yourself. So uh, yeah. yeah, if you can get one of these made, how much did you say it was? It, it is uh, $129.99 fully assembled and $99.99 unassembled as a kit. And that's bucks. Canadian dollars. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah, there's not much to the assembly. Like, this is this yeah. is like, you could give this to anybody and they could stick it together. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 99 bucks to play with it, maybe not, but everything's been released under GPL3. So, again, you can just source everything and go have the boards printed for yourself. And I, I've just been, been a big fan of everything from Plupico, the uh, homebrew yeah, trackball and other open source input device accessories. We, do, we just got to like band together and get this guy like an injection molding kit or a better 3D printer. Because mm. these always like a little bit rough on the resolution <laughs> side. When, when we zoom in there, I'm like, oof. And I, I'm just giving you a hard time because I, I don't have a good 3D printer either. Cool. But if you like the kind of our jib, want to help us out, uh, we'd appreciate yeah. your support. Get a sport tab, Patreon, LibrePay, PayPal, Bitcoin, Wishlist, Merch, Humble, all that. Uh, the best bang for your buck, the best return on investment is definitely becoming a patron where you can get access to our Discord. You get this show, you get the live and uncut version of this, all the pieces and bits that didn't make it into the full show, plus mm-hmm. the pre-show and the post-show and podcast custom RSS format, plus downloadable version of the video if you don't want to deal with YouTube's. Fun times uh, coming up later this week. Jordan's going to be back tomorrow if you're on our Twitch channel. He'll be doing some more Outer Worlds, I believe. And Friday, we'll be doing a rounds match for Trackmania, hopefully followed by a more successful RPG time. We did a little bit of a testing last week on Trackberry. Trackberry wasn't the problem. It was just me being dumb and not doing enough research. So I think we're going to be good for a uh, RPG adventure. And Trackmania 2 Stadium, which you can get into... No cost, no subs or anything like that. You can join in. You just can't get into our Discord, but you can join in the fun in the RPG exploration. That'll probably be about, we'll be doing rounds at 7.30 and like 8.30 for the RPG stuff if you want to come pop in for that. And of course, Linux Gamecast, the show will return uh, Saturday at uh, 7.30 for patrons. That's one of the little bonus things. We do a pre-pre-super shows in our little pre-production meeting. And live back on Twitch at 8 p.m. And stay tuned, of course, mm-hmm. over at Interfacing Linux. I had somebody hit me up and they're like, hey, did you get, oh, I hate this. I am still waiting. I'm still waiting uh, when somebody hits me up with like, have you gotten this piece of hardware yet? And I'm like, that piece of hardware is not getting cheap enough. Mm-hmm. And I will. Yeah. I'll find it when I get, I'm like, just, just wait, just wait. I'll hook you up. But Interfacing Linux, if you get any questions about uh, audio, video, we even get a little gaming thing over there if you're into the gaming. But you got questions for me, that's the place to post them, and I'll definitely get back to you on YouTube channel. All the fun bits rocking over there, and I'm wrapping up that Razdax for the only way to do it. It's the way I do it. I spend a month exhaustive. Everything you need to know. 
is going to be in there answering all your questions. I even put Jellyfin on it because I know some people are going to yeah. wonder about whether or not it's a good media <laughs> server. I got you covered. But until next week, ladies and gentlemen, get out there. Have a great one. Time to roll some yeah. credits. <laughs> Thank you to our advisors, our advisor, our Theron, <laughs> and our executive producers. One, two, three, four, five. Ian, Isha, KR Ducky, our Chicago Kicks people, Gloria Sagrol, Basil, Empty, Casey Clism, <laughs> our Sea Monsters, uh, Treggy, Mike, and lots of Death Notes, Kim, Chris, Leonardo, Dodger, Martin, Renee, our Chairlings. <laughs> too, too many people for me to name. <laughs> Still oh, picking boy. fights with the butt. Yes, I'm still picking fights. <laughs> I can do this all day. Stop spamming caps. Warning. <laughs> Ladies and yeah. gentlemen, boys and girls, have a great rest of your weekend, week, whatever. I know people work different times. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Love you all. <laughs> yeah, Arthur, and you is the advisor. <laughs>